Welcome to the 11th edition of the Living Memory Association podcast. This episode takes us back in time to look at life in Edinburgh's Dean Village and Stockbridge areas, focusing on the wonderful memories and stories of Evelyn and Jackie. We begin with a glimpse into the 1870s. The building of the Well Court, which is central to the Dean Village, that was funded by John Ritchie Finlay, who was the owner and manager of the Scotsman newspaper. And it was in 1875. And he lived in Rothsey Terrace, up above. So when he looked down from his window, he saw this derelict row of cottages called Bruins Court. And he decided to have those demolished. And he put up the money for the building of respectable, decent housing for working-class people. And as you go through the archway into the well court, you can see dockets in the wall where the metal gate used to be. And uh, that gate closed at 10 o'clock at night, so the respectable working-class people (laughs) were expected to be in their beds by then. (laughs) And uh, it's very picturesque. They've got orange pan-tiled roofs, the buildings. They're very high. And as part of the settlement, there's a hall, a community hall, And that was for the people of the well court to have their weddings and baptism ceremonies and so on. And apparently if you lived in the well court, it cost sixpence to hire the hall. If you lived out with the well court, you could still hire the hall, but it cost two and sixpence. Well, around about the millennium, there was a lot of work to be done on on restoring roofs and stonework. So it was costing a million pounds. But each of the residents were invited to donate a thousand pounds just so that they had a share in the renovation. And there's a clock on the tower of the community hall. And apparently at one time the hall was occupied by a baker who made donuts. And to make his donuts he had to use hot fat and that creates greasy steam. So a long time ago, the greasy steam had clogged up the workings of the clock and it had stopped. Now, this baker, apparently, had lots of leftover hot fat and he didn't know what to do with it. Rather than waste it, he discovered, maybe by accident, that if he shaved potatoes, raw potatoes, very finely and fried them in deep fat, he got potato crisps. These were so successful that he moved his business to Stockbridge Cannon Mills area and subsequently became Golden Wonder Crisps. Now, at the millennium, when all the restoration work was being done, somebody said, we should restore the clock. It hasn't gone, hasn't worked for years, for decades. So they knew this story about Golden Wonder Crisps, starting out their life there. So Golden Wonder were approached for a donation towards the restoration of the clock. And they did give a donation, but allegedly it was a large box of crisps. <laughs> In the Dean Village, my mother, she was a great mother, and she used to give us, I think it was Tuttons, on the Saturday morning. He got Tuttons and I got Tuttons. And we used to go down to Stop Bridge to the, the matinees. There was matinees, I think it was about 12 o'clock. It was all westerns, you know. But all, all, probably rubbish if you saw them now. But we we had these, you, we paid a penny to get in. It was the Savoy. The Savoy was a picture house. We either went to Savoy, that that was in the Hamilton Place, or we went to St. Stephen Street. It was the Grand, they called the picture house oh. there. We had a choice. You pay, we paid a penny to get in, and the other penny, we could get quite a lot of sweeties and that with the other penny. <laughs> so we done that every, my mother, but she was good, she done that every every Saturday. And I can remember the, the westerns, I can remember, all, they were all westerns. The, the well-known cowboys then was, maybe you've heard of him, he, Tom, Tom Mix. Well, Tom Mix, yes. Tom Mix. Well, there was Tom Mix, there was Buck Jones, hmm. there was Hoot Gibson, there was Bob Steele, there was Ken Maynard. George O'Brien, Monty Blue, <laughs> that was all the cowboys. <laughs> Wasn't it Tom Mix and the galloping standstill or something? He, he, he had a, even his horse, Tony was his horse. <laughs> you know, the strange thing, they were all small men. Oh, right. They were like more like jockeys. Oh, right. uh, but they were all, I mean, if you were seeing them now, yeah. Miles, it would be rubbish, you know. But we were boys and oh, yeah. we used to go galp and home on our horses. <laughs> Which shop would you go to to get your sweets? Do you remember? 
No, it'd be one in the main street. Mm. I couldn't you remember or not. What sort of things would you get boiling? Well, you used to get lollipops. Oh. Again, just lollipops. Yeah. And I never remember getting ice cream. It was lollipops and doddles, as we call them. Hard mm -hmm. sweeties, you know. Yeah. Things that would last you. <laughs> of course, yeah. When I first came there, in 1970, there was a little grocer's shop uh, just down beside the river. And ironically, the old man was called Mr Burnside. And he sold all kinds of things. It was a wee village grocer's shop. I remember going down one time and asking him for onions. And he said, oh, I don't keep fresh onions anymore because they go off. And then it's waste, a waste. Uh, but he had packets of dried onions. And my children were young at the time and the milkman hadn't come and one day I went down and asked for three pints of milk. And he said, oh, I can't spare you three pints because I've got my regulars to think of. I could give you one pint. And in no way am I mocking him, but it's just <laughs> to show you what a hand-to-mouth yeah. existence it was running a little grocery shop like that. And um, eventually he took ill and he went into a hospital and the shop never reopened after that. And it's a residential building now. They talk about now children aren't allowed to go out so much on their own. They didn't have television that you got any news, you know, maybe that was it. But we never heard of any no. child being attacked. No. So you'd be very young when you were going yeah. out on your own. Yeah. My brother and I, I would be, when we were going out, my brother was, I was five, my brother was eight, he was nine. Right. He was supposed to be looking after me, but it turned out I was looking after him. <laughs> I used to say, my mother used to say, was it, as it went on, you know, as we got older, she would say to my oldest brother, I, I don't think you should go with Jackie. It just gets you in the pot. Because <laughs> he couldn't claim her anything, you see. Oh, yes. And then he would say, he loved to go with me, you know. So if I would say, come on, we'll go up that tree or something like that, climb up that tree, he would say, I don't think that's a good idea, Jaco. <laughs> Jaco. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't suppose it stopped you, did it? No, no, no. And you said you mentioned that your mother had got you into the into the uh, Ravelston uh, church. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to church? We were in the Cubs. Right. My mother got us into the Cubs, and we went with Sunday school. I don't know if this. I think they still have that. Mm. It was a good thing, Mills, because it taught you right from wrong sort of business. Yeah. The Cubs. Mm. They still got the Cubs, I think. Oh yeah, well my son goes to Cubs. Ah, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because the teacher right for and it keeps you off the, the streets again. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter to us then because when we're in the Dean, the nearest uh, chip shop where you got fish supper mm -hmm. was in Stockbridge. Yeah, of course. Now, when my mother sent us, she used to send always the two of us together. Mm -hmm. And we used to run other way. But we used to go along by St Bernard as well. Oh, yes. yes. You know, along yeah, know it, yeah. onto Stockbridge yeah. and to Sanders Street. Right. And the chip shop was right at the end. Mm. We used to get our chips and <laughs> we ran all the way. Well, there used to be a grand old chap called Lawrence Walker, who was fifth generation miller at Bell's Mill in the Dean Village. And he used to take guided tours. And I went on one of his tours and uh, I made notes and I learned from him. He was my mentor. And is Bell's Mill itself, is that still a working mill? No, there was, a, there was a big explosion there in uh, 1971 because it was a wood mill, sawdust and wood, and there was a build-up of wood dust and it caused the explosion. Took the roof off the building. And Lawrence Walker himself, apparently, was dragged from the building with his hair on fire. But he shook off the fireman and insisted on going back in because he said, one of my men is still in there and he's got six bearings and I've got to get him out. And he did get the man out alive and they both survived. But uh, after that, the building was, well, restored and then it was bought over. There used to be a garage down there, but then there was a hotel. It was the Dragonara Hotel in the late 70s and now it's the Britannia Hotel. And they used to have, what was the what was the mill? They used to have that as the granary bar, but now it's converted into bedrooms as part of the hotel. And what shops were there in the Dean Village? There was, there was two shops just, just down from where I lived right in the top Dean Path, mm -hmm. and there was a shop. It was just a, what well, you would call it, a grocer come green grocer, yeah. but they had, in the window, they had jars of sweeties, and that's, that's in, the, in the winter, 
we used to all congregate there, kids, and that was what were entertainment. We used to play at guesses. <laughs> I guesses. We used to look in and maybe you'd pick a jar of sweeties with a certain name and you would give the initials and they would to guess. First one that guessed got to guess the next. If they couldn't get it, they would say, Skiffers! And we used to get towards the jar. <laughs> the jar. There was that shop there and then over, it was called Convenience Court. You went down and that brought you to the tannery. There was another shop that was something similar. That was Robinson's, Mrs. Robinson, and her family lived there. Willie Robinson. I knew oh, it was like a family in the Dean. Yeah. I can remember their names. There was there was the Urquhart family. There was the Shepherd family. There were our family, of course, the Stuart family. There was the Lees. There were the Bothics. There were the Whites. What well, knew each other? It was just like a family. Stockbridge and Cullen Bank is obviously a very expensive place to live these days. But has it always been that way? Has well, it always been a moneyed area of Edinburgh? I think in days going by, Stockbridge was quite a working class area. And if you look back old records of um, a lot of tradespeople lived there, ordinary working people. And same with Cumley Bank was maybe a little bit more upmarket. But the Dean Village itself was quite a poor area. And at one time, it was so dilapidated, they thought of pulling down the buildings and starting again. But luckily, a grant was obtained and they did some restoration instead. And then, you, as you said, you'd have the, the co-op, St Cuthbert's co-op. Yes, yeah. Funny. And then, my mother used to... But then, there were three of us, but she used to take us up the Dean in the pram I think there was one in the pram and the other two was running alongside. <laughs> and she used to take us, to, she used to go to Queen Street. Right. And there was a, a St. Cuthbert store there oh. at one time. It's away now. Yeah. But it was right, it had a, like what the, the ordinary St. Cuthbert's, they had a butcher and Ken, how mm. they were. Mm. Right. That's where my mother done her messages. And it was quite a wee trail up the Bells oh, Bray, yeah. you know. Yeah. We went round Great Stewart Street, round that way, right. to, to yeah. where it was, you know. And then another time, my mother, you know, they used to go to the wash house. Yeah. And she she would take us with the pram again, and she had the, the big bath with <laughs> the washing. <laughs> and we went to Chain Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chain Street, the laundry was there. Oh, right. It was the wash house, what yeah. we called the water. Yeah. And we used to play outside till she'd come out, you know. Yeah. Oh, I was... So would she go back along the water of Leith? Oh, no, we came up. Uh, what, I can't remember what they call that. Uh, it's coming from coming from Stockbridge. There was a school, Stockbridge School. Oh yeah. yeah. And you went up the hill, right. and it brought you onto Queen's Ferry Road. Oh yes, yes, yes. We crossed the road and went down the Dean from the from oh, the yeah. down that way down oh. down to the Dean Path. That was the way we went. That was the, that was the quickest. Well, I remember in 1975, it was the tercentenary. So 300 years since the building of the great granary and there was a bit of a celebration and they reenacted the handing over of the, the feeing of the granary, it was called. And the women in the village, and Well Court is the heart of the village, they dressed up in oldie costume and they had little cake stands selling homemade cakes and things and there was a bit of a ceremony of handing over the, the feeing. And you mentioned the tannery. be quite a few people employed in the tannery. Oh, yes. At that time it was busy. It was busy. Busy, and it was quite a thrill in the winter with the when the see were cobbles up the uh, up Bell's Bridge cobbles in the winter time of course frost and everything the horses used to spark their hoofs used to spark mm -hmm. you know and they would, they would fall and the men they used to come put a blanket over their head and the horses got up right away oh. you know with this blanket and then they used to they had a, a tra what they called a tracer horse that was that used to stand at the top of Bell's Bray and when that happened, they used to bring it down and hook it on. There was an extra horse, you see, and it was a picked horse. I always used to maintain that other horses didn't bother once this one was hooked on. It was well enough. It was the strongest horse, you know. I think it used to pull a lot up. <laughs> there was a man that made monuments, and there was a, a sculptor there. And in the, in the Dean village, see, there was a, a general buried there, Mackenzie, Right. Was it Mac I mean, Mac General Mackenzie, I think his name was. But he was away back. He he came from the, the islands, actually, and he started off in the army as a private, worked his way up to sergeant, sergeant major, but he became an officer, but he, he wasn't accepted because he just was just working class. And he, it was him, was fighting in Afghanistan. It was him that introduced 
the Gurkhas into the British Army. Was it really? Yeah, he... There's a big monument to him in that Dean Cemetery. Oh, right. But he... There were stories... The, the other kind of aristocrats in the, the, the these days, yes. the generals and that, when he was in India, he had an Indian woman and all this, kind oh, they used yeah. to tell a lot of lies about him. And there was stories that he eventually left and was, was in the... He fought in the Russian army, you know. He, he maintained when he was fighting against the Gurkhas, mm. and he maintained that we would be better having them on our side because they're terrific fighters. Thank you so much to our excellent storytellers Evelyn and Jackie for opening a window to the past to let us see the Dean Village and Stockbridge in days gone by. Our next episode of the Thelma Tapes will look at tenement living, so if you have any tales to tell, please pop in to see us at the Little Shop of Memory in Ocean Terminal Leith or at our new venue in the centre, Livingston. You can also follow us on Twitter at Thelma Scotland or catch up with our regular events and photographic memories by searching for the Living Memory Association on Facebook or YouTube. This episode is dedicated to the memory of Jackie Stewart, who died in 2012. Until next time, we bid you farewell.